I almost purchased like shampoo and conditioner for that <laughs> shower. You don't want us to keep using the two in one? <laughs> Do you want to know? I mean, is, is that it my the dogs? father's? Shut, Shut the up. F- up. It's no, no, it's, it's our dogs. dogs. to pack mm-hmm. and redo my toiletry bag and <laughs> I went into my linen closet that has all of my my apocalypse purchases mm-hmm. that's not really it's Bailey version of apocalypse mm-hmm. which is skincare that's all it is <laughs> it's just hundreds of dollars of skincare I love that. but I just love Bailey with the job that expires because she I know but I also don't really believe in that no okay to a if certain it's an unopened point, bottle tr- yeah. of no, no, like, yes. Yeah. But I was yes, everything has an expiration date. Sorry, I did it again. Touching, Touching your, your mic. Story. No. Cutting you off. Oh. <laughs> thank you. I changed the subject. Just I apologize. Kidding. You're good, you dude. Good. Um, so I went in there and I was like, I don't think I have any more shampoo and conditioner, but mm-hmm. I'll just double check. Oh, Sifted through it. I had keels. Ooh. Ooh. Travel. Like, Ooh. they're a special mm-hmm. blend of something, conditioner, and they're the perfect travel size bottles, and mm-hmm. Kiehl's last forever. That's yeah. why I love them. Mm-hmm. Shout out. <laughs> well, I keep thinking we need to, I almost purchased, like, shampoo and conditioner for that <laughs> shower. You don't want us to keep using the two-in-one? <laughs> Do you want to know? I mean, is, is that my father's? Shut, Shut the up. F- it's f- no, no, it's, it's our dogs. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I've been using that shit for years. Same. I mean, it is human shampoo, but we were in a pet aisle one time, and this lady was like, "Don't buy the pet pet shampoo and conditioner. Like, just go buy two and." <laughs> I my hair has never felt better than when I used that goddamn two and one. I've one never time. used it on my hair. I just use it on my body. Then that makes it even worse. <laughs> you and hutch watching your body hair <laughs> no wonder hutch is like bailey i love you <laughs> we smell you remind me smell of like myself me. <laughs> you smell like family <laughs> is that better <sighs> than <laughs> than it being our father yeah <laughs> thank you welcome to the entree episode <laughs> that ain't a hook Woo! That made me i'm cry. a little hot i know that made me cry that shirt's really cute by the way thank you turget it makes me think of turget um, Chessy. From <gasps> it's very Chessy. Um, I don't know who that Parent is. Trap. Parent Trap. Oh, the, the like, Lindsay Lowen. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. The ki- the like, housekeeper. Uh, maid, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah what oh, was she? What was Chessy? Living housekeeper? But she could like house too? manager. But she was childcare as well? I don't know. That All woman around. was a built in wife yeah. that she paid for. Actually, she's a genius. <laughs> Hold she on. got to live on that vineyard <laughs> yeah. and yeah. like just like for free bop around her day. Mm-hmm. Wearing cute. Ass for like clothes. three months because the kid was gone yes <laughs> yeah because she was gone away for the summer yeah so she got her own wow. vacation i want to rewatch that movie love that movie and i love that they're friends her and uh, meredith blake yes. yes they're besties besties yeah. i really want her to come uh to go do a cameo for abbott elementary because i don't watch that i don't either oh, it's so good i've heard it's amazing and it's, it's won, won a, a ton of awards yes at the emmys or as whatever. it deserved yeah um it's and hilarious quint is in it who Quinta. i feel like i've watched quinta grow up on the internet yeah. it's so cool to see where she is now yeah. today blows just my mind like a is little she badass. the main yeah. per- yes like, yes well, the she's writer the, like writer okay producer like, and she's the one i couldn't remember what her name was she won and, a bunch of those awards yeah. and herself and she started on buzzfeed yeah and she oh, based wow. it all on her mom's career yeah of being a teacher in Philly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So what's her face who plays Chessie? Yeah. Um, her character is this like hardened veteran teacher from the South side of Philly. Like she's, she uh, like her family, she's very Italian. Her family has ties to like, she's like, Oh, I got a guy. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> like she'll, you know, she'll get you what you need. Yeah. Um, and she's the best. That's awesome. I love yeah. her so much. So I'm hoping Meredith Blake comes and does a little cameo or something. At that'd some be point. fun. That'd be super fun. I need to yeah. watch more scripted stuff. Yeah. I'm trying so hard to get through the morning show mm. season two. Mm. Well, it's also delayed right now too. Um, at, Why? because of, Oh, the, sad. 
<laughs> strikes. Why? Why? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Which news strike yeah. are we on today? Um. Well, hi. That was not attractive. <laughs> Sorry. What did you do? <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, we have changed the setup a little bit. Uh, obviously, the studio looks amazing. Yeah. We've got cool lights. Cameras are closer to us. It's more intimate. It's like mm. you're with us. Yeah. Chilling. Chilling. Right here. Right Hi. here. Uh, and Halsey's in the middle. Hi. And Kelly's over there. Yeah. And I'm over here. We're trying things out. Try but this. I got a new grandpa blanket. <laughs> I love that blanket. It's nice. Yeah. Um, why are we still staring at ourselves? That's, That's why I up. mentioned it. We are watching ourselves a lot. And it's making us much more cognizant of mm -hmm. what we are. I said the yeah. word cognizant. And I <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Scully had the best idea to help us with saying our trigger words, which Halsey's are literally um, and literally. like. like, um. And then mine are <laughs> cognizant. I also do, I do literally sometimes too. And of course. And of course. Oh, of course. I say that all the time. I don't think Kelly has any. What's no, mine? Kelly's perfect. She is though. She's the princess. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> don't give her that that's, thing. That's too high of a standard to live up to. Girl, that's so the we're minimum. watching ourselves to keep ourselves aware. That's the minimum. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. The yeah. minimum. Princess. Being princess. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's <laughs> get back on track. Oh, I don't have my notebook, that's why. A princess of the Lord, you are a daughter of the king after all. Aren't we all? What a segue. In that segue, <laughs> we're going to talk segue. about some religion. <laughs> yeah, we've been teasing a few things about talking about our background and religious pasts. You're doing shifty eyes. Did you send the questions out? I did not send the questions okay, out. Okay, cool. I rethought about it, and I think I like your guys' authentic in the moment take, mm -hmm. even if they're slower. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are enacting our favorite phrase, pineapple watermelon. Yeah. If it's a no-go zone, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to our religious backgrounds involve our parents, as mm -hmm. most religious backgrounds do. And I want to be careful about that and those relationships yeah we're not trying to ruin families mm -hmm. here but i do think that there are sensitive tracks in these conversations when it comes to talking about our faith past Speaking faith tracks, or otherwise you pass those out? what you remember, remember how to pass out tracks yes yeah. i've never i don't think i've ever had to pass out tracks mm. where did I don't you think have to i pass them out but i know of them <gasps> oh, okay. i did have to pass them out on the missions field in panama <laughs> yeah, <duh. laughs> Yeah, what are those for people um, who are not, have no religious background? <laughs> so a tract is uh, like a little, usually it, it it's, it's a little paper or like a little pamphlet. booklet, pamphlet. Um, it usually uh, just gives like a very quick synopsis of the gospel. Um, very often found in fundy, fundamentalist uh, Christian communities. They're very much uh, a, a tool used to um spread the word <laughs> sorry yeah what i don't know it's a tool. just a tool. a tool yeah uh and yeah there's like very specific companies that make them uh i don't remember the names of them at the, off the top of my head but anyways um yeah and mm -hmm. they're usually f so, not usually sometimes full of interesting um propaganda yeah. <laughs> i just saw one in a chevron bathroom oh mm, yeah oh, thank you there Scully. they are tracks mm, it tracks it there tracks. were aliens involved in the one that i saw in the chevron bathroom oh. mm -hmm. not really sure why it was very long but it yes. was a cartoon interesting and then i threw it away yeah <laughs> because no one needs to see that yeah <laughs> anyways um that's yeah you oh, can I have order this book. them what the case the Christmas? for Christmas? Yeah, interesting. Mm. I might have gotten it done with you. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so something that is the same about all three of us is that we were all pastors' kids at some point in our life. Halsey and I were children's pastors' kids. Yeah, which is has a whole other has its own set of fun traumas. Uh, especially with my background, one of the things that I did want to ask you is if you would both be comfortable in this episode if I said a part of my story 
to give people context yeah, to yours because I think the religious story is very intertwined because it was all at the same time for me in my mm-hmm. childhood. Yeah. Okay, cool. <sighs> We're in. However, to do some and whenever major trigger warnings for this episode, we are. Unfortunately for me, I'll only speak for myself. My religious background comes from a lot of familial trauma. And it's a big reason as to why I don't. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think only we heard it. It's okay. Okay. Um, my heart just started being so fast. It's a huge reason why I stepped away from the church when I did. I stopped going to church when I was 16. I have been a Christian since I was five, which how do you make a Christian when they're five years old and their brain is not fully developed? Don't know. But um, my parents were always in the church since they were married. That's where they met. And um, they were part of a church that was extremely legalistic uh and by the book kind of christians we're talking there was no alcohol at their wedding right uh yeah no dancing no dancing no dancing Mm -hmm. at their wedding isn't that crazy yeah um both sides of their family had significant trauma that is not my story to share and as your trigger warning and i'll put these in the show notes too this is child abuse sexual abuse and so many other abuses that went on in my story. Mm-hmm. So if that's too much for you, we'll give you the skipper notes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Purity nev- culture. Oh, yeah. And, and for you guys yeah. or wherever you want to put your triggers in. Yeah. Purity culture. Funness. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a whole episode of it. Yeah, itself. it really is. That <laughs> has to be separated from yeah. religion. Anyways. They were part of a really, like the beginnings of a really small church when they were first married. And I was like the first baby of this church family. Mm. So uh, I, my, all of my memories as a kid that I still have are about being at church, being known at church, kind of like, this feels gross, but celebrity status. Like our family was very loved at some point. Mm. And then for some reason we just weren't there's somewhere in this storyline of my childhood and and young adolescence where I think our father just he his masks started falling a lot um especially as he got into his 30s and what's weird being in my 30s now is I relate to that a lot because Mm -hmm. I feel like I masked up for my whole adulthood to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned just through my own journey in the last couple of years is that over time, those tools and coping mechanisms that you make fall apart because they're coping mechanisms. They're not built to last. Mm -hmm. They ain't for tough. They're going to wear down. And I think his wore down around his thirties and I could see he just failed a lot. Like when I was born. Exactly. Hi. (laughs) Hi. It's me. It's no. I'm the probably. No. No. You're not. I was just quoting okay. Taylor Swift for you. Thank you. That's <laughs> twice now. Is- You're welcome. Mm-hmm. She's really top of mind after a TikTok I saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> I, where was I? Masks were falling off in your yes. 30s. You've noticed that too. Yeah, I've noticed, but I have all these healthy coping mechanisms mm-hmm. because of therapy and because of self-work that I will not do the things that he did to cope. Yeah. Unfortunately, around that time, he uh, started sexually molesting me in secret, obviously, and in moments where he could find alone time. Um, that's also part of his story and background, is that he was also, also sexually molested by family members, and it was kept a family secret for well till now (laughs) surprise um and he never dealt with it never went to therapy never told anyone and I think it just piled up in him and it broke him and then he started acting out yeah and that lasted from eight ish to 13 about I remember um it stopping really after like the worst time around 12, but he did little things after that 
even though I had put this final threshold of this is not normal. And during this whole time of this abuse happening was his biggest time in church. He was a massive children's pastor with my mom, leading vacation Bible studies, summer camps, and being very present and prominent in the church that we were in Mm -hmm. while also doing this abuse on the side. And then turning around and asking me to be a part of church and to be involved in church Mm -hmm. and to wear my own mask from the get-go yeah, and to play this role of a perfect Christian family. And at that point, you know, we were homeschooled. I was homeschooled until third grade and then for junior high. So I went to like a traditional public school in between. Mm -hmm. But we were always with our parents. We were always home with each other. So unfortunately, abuse can happen so much more often when there's that availability. Mm -hmm. And he was in and out of work all the time, which gave him more time to just sit in it, in the pain and not know how to deal with it. So church for me is wrapped up in all of that, unfortunately, because of that role that I had to play as a very small kid and having to grow up really, really fast. Mm -hmm. I also felt that I had to protect them, my brother and sister, because when I realized it wasn't normal, then all I could do was compare my experience to everyone else's in order to protect them away from it all. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, he manipulated me for many years to make sure that I would never tell anyone anything. Um, And and I didn't tell anyone anything until I was seeing a counselor (laughs) at church. Mm -hmm. And while I don't feel like this was a healthy therapy experience, I am grateful for the place that she did have in my life now. Back then, I was not grateful for her. But during this counseling experience with someone at church, she said, I think we need to tell your family. We have to bring this to light. And I said, okay. And it exploded everything. And yeah. I was 24, 5? I was 17. I was a senior in high school. 17 plus 7. I can't do math. 24? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 24, yep. mm-hmm. 24 25. almost 25. Yeah. yeah. And it just everything imploded. It was insane. And our church was also involved in the implosion. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of hurt done to me. I only speak for me, but Mm -hmm. in my opinion, to the rest of my family for the detriment of the health of the family Mm -hmm. and keeping our family together and the marriage together. Because in a Christian family, Mm -hmm. based on this pastor's way of doing Christianity, this church's way of doing Christianity, new church, by the way, there's two significant churches in our, the Carlin lives. Mm -hmm. And this was the second, both hurt us immensely. The second is the one that I did the bulk of my growing up in. Yes. Um, the first church, the one that our parents helped plant them was, I was only grew up there until, uh, from birth until I was seven. Yeah. And then we moved. So a lot of your core memories are second church i do have a lot of memory of that first church Ooh, actually interesting happy well, memories mixed. Yeah, mix it is a lot of that like um there was a lot of expectation yeah um in that like being a, a pastor's kid being seen mm-hmm. um there there was a lot of expectation of like you have to act a certain way you have to mm-hmm. you know I had to be friends with kids I didn't want to be friends with. <laughs> like, you know, there's like <laughs> to bring some levity to it. Yeah. Um, you have to be the nice kid. You have, to, you have yeah. to be the kid that is accepting of everyone, which is the only part of my upbringing in church mm-hmm. is to be the everyone person, to like seek mm-hmm. love, p- give love to every kind of person, because mm-hmm. I do feel like that has made me the kind of person that I am today, mm-hmm. to like fight for the things that are important to me politically or otherwise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it was ingrained in me then to like be the outreach to any single person who walks through the door. I do love that aspect of my faith. Yeah. And that's the irony, right? It's like we're, as we're raised, we're told like, love your neighbor, mm-hmm. fight for the poor, yeah, take care of them, yeah. take care of the, the widow Community. and the orphan yeah. and all of these things. But then when we as adults or as young, you know, or older teenagers or whatever start to push back and say, 
okay, then let's do that. Yeah, you're not Le- doing that. Yeah, you start let's, poking at it. When you start poking at it and asking too many questions, which we both got in a lot of trouble for. So many questions. Often throughout our teenage years for asking questions. We both got pulled into meetings. Many <laughs> counseling appointments. <laughs> really? Many yes. meetings being like, hey, stop it. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Um, I had a lot of questions hilariously about sex and anything in relation to Mm-hmm. Any kind of thing about sex because I didn't have answers to my questions yeah. because I was a, a abused, molested kid who didn't have answers or titles mm-hmm. to those names. And then g- going through puberty, mm-hmm. being in a new church that I no one knew me at and I was uh, felt ostracized. Also yeah. being a bigger kid, like chubbier, taller, bigger than any of the other girls. I felt like I was on fire at all times. Like I was sticking out like a sore thumb. And then I felt like my brain was different than all of those girls. And I would ask questions of my counselors and like needing to just discover and have answers for what was done to me. And it was pinned as I was, I was sinful because of the things that I was talking about and perverse. And I needed to and you have, shouldn't be thinking that, talking about mm-hmm. that. Yep. Not, not Especially in, not as a girl. Not as a yeah. girl. Not in small groups with other girls because then that's going to make them want to do the Googling and the yeah. f- finding out too. Mm-hmm. I completely ostracized. Yeah. I got pulled into another church counseling situation when I was in high school with another girl who was also abused mm-hmm. and asking the same questions that I was asking and trying to get research out of these freaking counselors and leaders Mm -hmm. and pastors we were pulled into an after like an afternoon in the weekday conversation with the counselor to talk about how we need to um repent for the things that we're asking about and that we're thinking about and that we are in control of the fantasies in our brain and that these are sinful fantasies and the fact that you're having them at this age is perverse and you shouldn't be over sexualizing things and it was insane. Yeah. Yeah. And I just remember sitting next to this poor girl thinking, one, how are we the same? Like what was done to us or what came before this to put us both in this spot? Yeah. But also, how is this the solution? How is shame the solution? Yeah. And what's really frustrating is Second Church was all about grace. That was their thing. And it still is to this day. Mm -hmm. Lead by grace. Love with grace. And the shame piece, they wrote a whole book about shame. And yet that's all they did to my graduating class, to her graduating class. These, It's insane to see. I I hope me telling our story Mm -hmm. puts a fire to some of these other stories because I know that the things that were done to me at Mm -hmm. second church were minuscule compared to other stories. And those are not my stories to tell, but all I'm saying is this is my past religious experience. I know I've been talking for a minute Mm -hmm. and I forgot to set the timer. That's okay. Um, My past religious experience clearly (laughs) defines my current, which is I'm so excited to have a different experience with, faith and spirituality and religion Mm -hmm. perfect oh my god i felt like we were talking for hours Mm -hmm. only 20 minutes great um i don't know what i am like we've talked we we have some episodes that will never air because they're lost to the to the world um but we talked to (laughs) our we talked a little bit about the fact that i feel like i'm more agnostic than anything and I feel like there is a higher power, but I, f- for me, I feel like it's just more universe based, which is why I'm into tarot, why I'm into angel numbers. Yeah. I have an angel lady that I want to have on the Patreon show. <laughs> she's amazing. Yes. And she does dreams. <gasps> yes. She's incredible. Um, I don't know if she'll ever be on the show, but I think we can have like, uh, we can do a phone call with her. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Mm. Um, I just, that's also why I want my future to be based on seeking my joy and what that actually is for me even if it changes yeah um I think people should be allowed to evolve why are you why do you have to be the same kind of person your whole life that sounds so boring you know um I know that was like a dump of information 
Okay, so... Oof. When we did the 10 years ago episode. Yeah. That was when I was 24, 20. Yeah. And that was when everything blew up. And I didn't have my family. So when we were referencing that in that episode... There was this moment that year when he told you guys everything and I got to come home Mm -hmm. for the first time ever and to be able to walk into my home and be known at 24 is the most surreal experience (laughs) it felt like I could breathe and I know how kitschy that is chuggy but truly I felt like everything uncontracted and I know there's so much to that Mm -hmm. next year for Halsey's in my story Mm -hmm. we'll talk about at some point but um after that I moved (laughs) (laughs) I literally dined and dashed my family (laughs) I was like here's all this trauma dump Bye. <laughs> Enjoy your own. I'm going to bounce. Yeah. And I did. And I moved to Seattle that year. And I am so grateful that I did. And I know how selfish that is. But I, it was this release of, okay, I've held this for so long. And I honestly, I just, I, at that point, things were volatile with our father. Restraining orders were put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you were fresh in the club. You were I, fresh to the club. I keep thinking about this too. I never yeah. realize how soon I came onto the scene you after did. all of this. Like everything like was set on, was still on fire. On fire. Oh, yes. And, and you stepped in. Yep. And I remember like early on too, like you all would talk and I would mm-hmm. be there and mm-hmm. you didn't know. And you would, you you would talk cryptically because like, <laughs> and, and kind of, because it was still Bailey's story to tell. At yes. That time. It, yeah. I, I wasn't, you hadn't told me yet to be fair. Not that you needed to, I was brand new to the family. Yeah. Like it and was to not be my fair, place to know. I told the closest people in my life for the first time, like months, yes. not even months, probably weeks before you came into the fold. And I hadn't even told my best friends. No one knew. <laughs> Scully's <laughs> Scully said Jansen's track record with women was uh, a little rough back then, which is true. Yeah. And I was old I enough. I wasn't going to be. A, you didn't think I was going to be around for very long. It wasn't even that. Kelly. I knew you were going to be around. Oh, Actually, I did, either. too. To oh, be guys. truly honest yeah. with you, the first time I met you, I was like, I know she'll be here for the rest of my life, but I can't do it right now. Yeah. I mm-hmm. couldn't handle trying to like do relationship with you. And like build something because I also knew I was leaving. Yeah. And I was like, I I got too much. And I was trying so hard to like break away all of my cords to Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I I know you'll be here. (laughs) Just like wait for me. Yeah. Like a Hallmark movie. (laughs) Look at us 10 years later. And then literally uh, (laughs) Nora Ephron is crying in heaven right now. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I know. Um, if any, if this episode reaches a lot of people, mm-hmm. which is our hope, that they will have questions on how I didn't come forward, or how I didn't want him to go to jail, or how I didn't seek out restitution, or whatever. And all I have to say to that is, you are not me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do not know this person and or this me. You don't know my person like inside. Yeah. And I you can't ask a 24 year old mm-hmm. or a 12 year old to do that to the person that is supposed to be their father. Yeah. And you also can't do that to someone who was being told from a religious standpoint to put that father on a pedestal and never take it down. You know, so I, I I can't live that way either way either. Like I can't live in this mindset of what if, 
I did for a very long time and I was a very sad person while living mm-hmm. that way. And I don't need to be that person anymore. And respectfully, none of their goddamn business. Amen. Just Praises to put it lot. simply. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. T- don't be weird in Paris. You're right. You're right. You're right. Don't go tracking people down or tracking down what church we went to or, Ew. you know, it's just weird. Don't and do it bad. doesn't like, it won't do anything. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it won't do anything because for me, this is all too distant. I yeah. don't give a crap about this church, about these people. <gasps> Mom's a little fresher. <laughs> Yours is definitely fresher and we'll get to that. Yeah. But I could care less about canceling anyone. I don't care. Yeah. So keep it to yourself. Do it. Just do it. And I just hope that my story helps some person. Yeah. yeah. Resonates. Resonate, but also like I just wish I wish I had had one person ask anything. <laughs> yeah. I never I was pleading for pastors, for counselors, for small group leaders to give a crap. Yeah. And no one ever did. All they ever kept asking was, do you want to come counsel at summer camp? Yeah. Do you want to watch my kids? Do you want to lead Sunday school? Do you want to be a part of women's ministry? Yeah. Never. Yeah. What is there something in your life that's yeah. making you have these questions? As I gain yeah. hundreds of pounds, by the way. Yeah. At 24, I... What I had lost 70 pounds, but before that, like when I was the deepest in church in my poisonous season, Mm -hmm. I was putting on all of my weight. Like you could see physically something was wrong yeah, and that I was holding up in myself and screaming for someone to notice. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Kelly, my question for you. Yeah. (laughs) Um... What's your earliest memory of church? Go back. Go into your mind. Go into your mind. My dad was a pastor. Yes. So I was pastor's kid, missionary kid, camp kid. Wow. Mm -hmm. The trifecta. Before I was 10. All before I was 10. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know how old I was, but I do remember church and both my parents were well he was the pastor and my mom helped him with like administrative stuff too. Yeah. so they were always there and so I, I remember spending a lot of time there like on the weekdays too as yep. like a child because mm-hmm. I was never put in like daycare or anything like yep. that you came with, so <laughs> came I would, with mom and dad yeah yep, yep. so I would play <laughs> like in the sanctuary like the oh. mics yeah girl yep. I, I remember this is a lighthearted whatever, no, but, like, no, I remember there was cool. a woman who came to, like, help, too, and she had two giant schnauzers, and she brought the dogs with her to the church. Yeah. Because it's just As us, you like, do. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, like, she needed, and I went in because I was, like, maybe five or six, I don't know, but yeah. wanted to play with these dogs, and... I was a little child, and this dog, like, pinned me up against a wall, like, <laughs> licking my face and stuff. Terrified me of big dogs for a very yeah. long, long and time. And now you have the two biggest dogs ever. I know. <laughs> so, but, I mean, I just remember as a child always being there. Yeah, same. No matter if what? it was me, like, stealing communion in the yes! kitchen. Girl. <laughs> like, juice. That bread. The juice. Oh, you guys so had bread? We had bread. Oh, we had crackers. We had crackers. Oh, we had good bread like shepherd's loaf i think is what it's called Mm -hmm. or something like that and it's just this huge big big old french bread yes homemade yeah oh no store-bought but okay but still 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 delicious yeah (laughs) eventually at at another church once we left that yeah and moved it was crackers and like gluten-free crackers they were nasty when second church i love that we're calling it about that by the way cracks me up when second church did the gluten-free vegan whatever Mm -hmm. oh sand it just tastes like sand it's nasty i remember when they switched the they switched to that and the first sunday like everyone like crunched at the same time and, you could hear it across. <laughs> and then you hear this mm. and the crunch yeah, and was, was like, heard Ugh. throughout the body yeah Oof. Um, um stealing food is 
So I remember stealing food Elite and yes. behavior. And I remember I was, there weren't a lot of kids my age hmm. at the church. And mm-hmm. so like Sunday school, we were always with like younger kids. Mm-hmm. Like I was always the oldest. Yeah. In like the children. I was that for a while Because too. same age, like my older sister, five years older oh, than yeah. me, five and seven years older than me for both of them. So. I was just the young child that was like <laughs> bopping around. around, thrown in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just I had to go. I had to be part of everything. Mm-hmm. Does that resonate for you? Oh yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because you're kind of you're like the max middle child. Yeah, yeah. Because of your older siblings, but then all of the babies underneath that church. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yep. So if if mom and dad had something to go to, I was right there with them. Cause Suddenly, I no you're choice. a babysitter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for free. <laughs> Um, yeah. Halsey, mm-hmm. what's your earliest c- church memory? Mm. Uh, I, there's a lot. I, I, I remember quite a bit. It's weird. There's uh, large chunks of my childhood where I'm like, yeah, f- I don't know, like, sure, stuff happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> But then there's is a lot of my like I have a lot of vivid memory of my childhood. Yeah. Especially like probably ages six to twelve. Yeah. Like I remember a lot of those years. Um, and so the tail end of that was our time at First Church. And um I can remember like wandering the halls of that church i i also and so much of it is also linked to just like pictures too right yeah um because <laughs> all of the pictures do you have this like all of your childhood pictures are they at church or, or at a, camp or <laughs> at camp or like yes. at a ch- church yeah. function for the most part i think same yeah. <laughs> um but there's like this one like very vivid memory uh, towards the tail end of our time at that church um where it's bailey and i in uh the women's restroom oh yeah and she's curling my hair. Yeah. And she burned the crap out of me. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but it's like my mom's favorite picture of us because yeah. it was like the only picture of us being nice to each other back then. Yeah. Mm. As siblings do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. did not. Like, we've we talk- didn't vibe. It's okay. We didn't vibe. But again, we've talked about yes. this in personal conversations. Yes. Halsey's birth signified a lot of the start of the dark part of our family for me yeah and i also resented the fact that i had to protect her that i felt like i was put in a position to protect her yeah and my father loved halsey yeah pride and joy i was up on a pedestal yeah Yeah. because he he was the baby of his family and saw a lot of himself in Mm -hmm. her which i never understood because i don't think she's like him really at all Yeah. yeah but yeah i just didn't like her for that yeah. And it's mm-hmm. cruel, cruel Bailey child, but, mm. child but, Bailey. but the, the, the irony of it all, right, is that like I didn't like you for the same reasons mm. because I saw you as the also as the kid on the pedestal. Yeah. I saw you as like the perfect emblem that I could never reach mm. because, yeah. But you little did you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, no, this is perfect Bailey, and I will never mm-hmm. be. Like, I'll never reach that. Yeah. That's how I coped with, as I became more educated of what was going on with me, mm-hmm. to me, I I feel like a lot of abused kids either go towards escapism of drugs, alcohol, partying, mm-hmm. just debauchery, mm-hmm. or the straight and narrow perfection, perfection statue must be perfect to be able to get out that was my yeah. only course was i need to get out of here yeah the only way i'm going to do that is if i do it myself and i need to do the opposite of what my father was showing us as an example of like how to be successful yeah so i just became very self-obsessed with just being perfect yeah so that's a lot to live up to so that's yeah. why that picture is a little ironic mm-hmm. um but yeah those are my first your first memories, a lot of first memories i'm yeah. surprised that you know a lot about first church or that you remember a lot about first church yeah i mean so i also grew up as the tag along kid right like mm-hmm. anywhere my parents went i was there yeah um especially siblings much older than me who were able to go you know yeah as a reminder we're thing. seven years apart yes we have the same exact age differences as kelly and her siblings yeah mm-hmm. um 
so I mean, I was going to camps from birth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if they were running a kid, like I remember retreats. retreats, kids camps, women's retreats, women's retreats, <laughs> all of it. Like I, I have been, retreats. I have been going to it since I was literally a newborn. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can remember very clearly. It's so weird. The summer, the, our last summer at that church hmm. for some reason it's that stuck. It, it's so vivid. Yeah. It was the year before I would have been old enough to go to camp as yeah. a camper, but mom and dad had to bring me, right? Because free child here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And <laughs> camp kid um, and pastor, children's pastor's kid. And um, I, yeah, I can so clearly remember the campground and mm-hmm. um, I got to, I like felt really cool because I got to be the youngest kid in like the mm-hmm. girls side of the dorm yeah because how the dorm was was like all of the boys rooms were on one side all the girls yeah. rooms were on the other and it was just one huge hallway yeah oh, I love and that at the yeah. end of the hall was the like chapel uh-huh. and so it it was just like it was just a really interesting building i remember loving it but um looking back now it was very jail-esque a little bit <laughs> very jail <jail-esque>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, so I just, I very vividly remember that summer. Yeah. Um, and then, because by the next summer, we were at Second Church. Yes. And Real fast. my first event, really, other, because our first Sunday at Second Church was Easter Sunday. Huh? Um, <laughs> yep. Woof. Um, and then, so like spring, so my first big event was Kids Camp. It was my first year. I turned eight that week because my birthday is July 2nd. Yes. So I always had my birthday at camp. And um, because it's always over 4th of July weekend. Yeah. And uh, went to camp with people I didn't, didn't know. No, I was, I was. I was there though, right? No, th- that was the next year. Oh, okay. Because um, I was a counselor the next year. I think you're on work crew the next year or something, okay. whatever. But anyways. Child labor. Child, yeah. More Free. child labor. Uh, actually, no. You paid for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. They did you, work crew. Did you guys have work crew at your camp? Like the students who would come? Or you like paid or, to come or work they for paid. the week or whatever? <clears throat> so all the kids are volunteer in wow. the summer. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then there's two weeks of, like two separate weeks of camp where there's, I think there's 16 of us where yeah. you pay to be a camper, but you're learning how to work at camp. <laughs> the camp way yeah what a business model man yeah genius so ours was paid too that's right because yeah. we had to pay for like our food and the gas yeah. basically yeah oh my god anyways yeah. anyways um thank you yeah for your first memories uh-huh um do you, at what age did you accept christ into your heart I was around five as well. Really? Yeah. I was also five. <gasps> and I also remember it very vividly. Me too. Because Wait. Because you played a part in it. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Yeah. You put the literal fear of God in me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. No, go ahead, Kelly. Kelly, you tell your story. Well, I feel like I've honestly, like, blocked a lot of this out, but I'm trying to remember, <laughs> like, prepping my testimony for a campfire, like, what I wrote. I found the wrote. tissues. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. I was, I, I was like, they're somewhere down here. That's okay. Um, I was, I think around five and I don't really remember specifics because I can't yeah. remember, but something we were driving home and mm-hmm. I remember like we were getting in, like pulling into our garage and I was like having a conversation with my parents. I think, yeah, I might be making all this up. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I remember what my brain is telling me right now. That's fine. Um, and I think I was just curious because obviously it was like anything I already knew. And so I was like, well, if you're going to go to heaven, I need to make sure that I'm going to heaven too. Same. So. That's what I was told. Yep. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> what if I die tonight? What if we all die tonight? That's what they told us. And what if the rapture happens? happens. <laughs> so, yes. Left Behind, we read all of those the books. The kids versions? Oh, we read the Oh, the you read show? the adult versions? There was a show? Yes, there was a movie. Yes, there was multiple. We went to see it in theaters. Yep. And. <laughs> Triggered, sorry. <laughs> we, because, so, in the movie, when they do the rapture. Yes. <laughs> when the rapture happens. <laughs> you know how, like, their clothes are just, like, suddenly on the scene? Yes. yes. I didn't, I was a young child. I didn't understand what was happening. 
Did your so, family ever play the rapture prank? No. <laughs> but <laughs> hold on. Sorry, um, no finish. Um, sorry, I'm so sorry. We get out of. The, I think we get out of the movie. I feel like we were at the movie theater when this happened, and someone goes rapture drill. I'm I said, sorry. Quick, everybody, take off your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> because i thought that's what happened i was like okay let's do this like, get naked to go be with jesus because i got ready <laughs> let's go yeah. oh Panic. that's great straight oh. okay wait so did you accept christ in the car i don't know if that had any correlation with but it, it kind of set it off maybe, maybe around that time that I, makes sense but i feel that uh, what I remember around that time was those conversations of death, rapture, heaven, what I don't get, what I do get. It was the 90s, man. It was the 90s, yeah. dude. Yeah. It was. And in Phoenix, yeah. which was ex- is extremely conservative, mm-hmm. was extremely conservative, and our parents didn't have Google, okay? Yeah. Let's put a uh, blame a lot about on that. Um, yeah. But Google is free. You can use it right now. Yeah. Trust. Mm-hmm. Sponsored by... So Bailey and I were sitting in our childhood bedroom that we shared until I was 10 and she was 17. I am five years old. We're cleaning our room, as was a constant battle between us. I'm a Virgo. She's a Virgo. I'm a Cancer. I'm very messy. Very messy. In my space. And a last child. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we're sitting there. We're folding laundry. Very vividly remember this. Mom's not home for some reason. I don't know where she's at. Church. Probably. <laughs> where else? <laughs> um, Jansen's also not around. Who knows where he's at? Probably Friends playing house. Legos. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Bailey goes, I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to, like, figure this out. <laughs> and Except Jesus. So I'm upset. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Go to dad. Go, I want to accept Jesus because I don't want to go to hell. Because <laughs> Bailey told me I'm going to go to hell if I don't accept Jesus. So I... Pray the prayer. Yeah. I proceed. So we were also in, and I'm sure we'll also do a deep dive on this one day, Pioneer Girls, which was, you do not know what this is because I think Wait. it's only an Arizona thing. Shut up. It's only an Arizona thing? I don't know if it's anywhere else. I've never Christian met. Girl Scouts. It's literally Christian Girl You've Scouts. You've never even heard of it? It's, no. It's like Kiwana's Light. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. You because get badges. You get badges, but it's not as um, always- salesy. It's not as salesy, and it's not as strict. Yes. Kiwanis was very, like, regulated. You're reading the Bible. Yeah, and you're memorizing, and you, yes. like, you have to. I did, like, Awanas. Awanas, not Kiwanis. Oh. Awanas. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? I don't go to church anymore. <laughs> Kiwanis. Cubbies. Sparkies. Yes. 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 Teen Awanas. Titans. Yes. yes. Okay, so this I was, like, Awanas <laughs> oh, light. Okay, yeah. With Go. Pioneer Girls. <laughs> and it was led by all moms and yes. their daughters yeah. were all of the Pioneer Girls. Yes. And it was like h- homestead makers. Oh. Yeah. You're learning how to become a housewife. And there was a boy's version. Mm-hmm, to how to become a man. Yeah. <gasps> Which I don't remember the, what it was called. I would go to Pioneer Girls and they would do the like call to the like the altar call whatever like uh, the yeah the like if you want to pray if you want to accept jesus Anyone come down yes to the front. well theirs was like you would fill out this little card mm-hmm. oh. i probably filled that card out so many times at least because i didn't understand that you only had to do it once <laughs> every just week in case. just in case until finally a leader was like hey i've noticed that you've filled this out a few times <laughs> <laughs> i think we've all i've had that conversation yes. too they're like, like i think you, you need to know that time. like you're already saved <laughs> yeah you're good. <laughs> Did you get saved multiple times? Yes. Yeah. A thousand percent. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. Wait, I thought it was the, I did not no. expect you to say that. Yeah. Wait, multiple I times. think I was very confused. Wait, no, I was only, no, baptized, I was only once. baptized once. I was also only baptized once, but I was saved On the 4th of multiple July. times. <laughs> <laughs> you needed extra baptisms, Philly. Uh-huh. Uh, dunk him a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> Hold him under for a second. <laughs> He has lung capacity. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, that is so funny. Wait, when were you saved? How, wait, how many times? I don't know. Exactly. At least a dozen. More, but... What? Oh, at least. I, I think... so, I'm telling you, I would fill that card out like every single week. Oh, that's a, so okay. So there was two significant. Mine was the five year old one, and then on my first first missions trip, I was in junior high, and 
I accepted Christ again on that missions trip at like a group worship night oh. because I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Cry night. Cry night. Oh, well, God. and I'm trying to remember what it's called. Google. Where like. Sorry. No, you're OK. Take a second. We can edit it. Like I was saved mm -hmm. and then I'm like reclaiming my faith. Mm. My oh, faith. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's called, but I know what you're talking about. Reclaiming. I mean, yeah, that's kind of. Recommitment. Maybe. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Something like that. So, like, I remember, like, multiple times of that. It's like, well, I'm already saved, so I'm going to. I'm recommitting myself mm -hmm. to. Right. Getting back on the straight and narrow. Yes. Yep. Being more perfect. Because mm -hmm. you weren't perfect enough. Um, I'm going to stop sinning now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and constantly. I'm, I would do a lot of. <laughs> Bargaining? Oh, me too. Did you guys do the bargaining? I think I still do. <laughs> <laughs> if I stop doing this, will you please let this happen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I love how if I stop we all are. thinking about Kristen Stewart, can I please <laughs> graduate high school? <laughs> please, I promise. I promise. <laughs> Mine was like, one more True Blood episode. One more True Blood episode. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe uh, a second one. Yeah. Oh, oh God. God, that's great. One of these days we need to talk about how we snuck in watching and like getting educated while being in a Christian household. Because I would sneak early mornings <laughs> HBO, watching, reading dirty books, yeah. listening to the, like all the yeah. time in the funniest of ways. Yeah. Just to like become an adult, the adult that I am today to be like, you poor little girl. <laughs> You were just doing exactly it what every character. other girl was doing. Yeah. And you were yeah. shamed for every aspect of it. it makes yeah. me so sad. Okay. I think some of the hiding built some character. You, you know? think? You know. I think it builds more trauma. <laughs> Probably that too. But got my best MTV watching done at 3 a.m. Oh, while everybody else was asleep. Yeah. Volume See, I, on. Didn't, I wasn't a cable kid, so I didn't get access to that kind of stuff. Volume on too. Or like if you stayed home from sick. Home from sick. Home sick from school. <laughs> yep. I watched a lot of MTV. Yep. A lot of MTV time. and Jerry Springer. <laughs> oh. oh. Spicy. Spicy. He just died. Yeah. R.I.P. He had a very interesting career. Did you? I'll send you a podcast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of place was, like, how has church changed in your brain? And when did it start turning away from, what, like, to what it is now? You know what I mean? Mm. I, for me, that after I moved to Seattle and I got distance from everything and everyone who knew the Carlins, mm -hmm. the Carlins, that's mm -hmm. our name. I don't know why I got worried about saying our last name for a second. It freaked no, me we've out. We've said it multiple times. I know. <laughs> uh, because we were, to an extent, known. Yeah. And But I was still not known publicly. I think that's another thing that people will question about my story is like, why haven't you said anything before? Especially if people from our first or second church listen to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was a mom protection thing. Mm -hmm. I was not catering to protecting her, but her whole life had just been rocked and she lost everything. And I couldn't help but feel like the person who was doing that to her after a lot of therapy I see now that I'm not the person yeah but I had to be the truth teller and that sucks to be that person and I think that I did enough to have to be the truth teller to my own family I also didn't owe everyone else that information then yeah. now I'm ready yeah I feel like because I'm out of my career and I'm going towards a new one I feel ready to be known mm -hmm. and hopefully have my story impact kids and people who are around kids mm -hmm. to look out for triggers yeah. and yeah. signs and flags because they are, it's not happening at drag shows. Yeah. This no. is happening at your church right now. It's happening at your church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting that I can say that confidently and know that it is true. It's happening at your private Christian school. Yes. It's happening at, you know. It's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Same, again, back yeah. to Target. Target. Mm -hmm. It's the suburban moms. <laughs> it's the places, you, people you least expect, yeah. okay? Yeah. And if you can learn any of the signs from my story, that will make me 
proud to have been more open mm-hmm. now. But I think 10 years ago, I would not have been impactful. Yeah. It would have been messy, dramatic. It would have ruined more lives. And my family's life was already ruined enough. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to run away, to be yeah. totally honest. And maybe you had to work through some of it for yourself. Hell yeah. You could share it and, and be open. Oh, had you mean get seek actual therapy, not <laughs> yeah. a church counselor? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you had earned the right to run away. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yep. I don't think you've ever said that. <laughs> no, no. Um, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> so what was oh. I saying? What well, the question was? When when did your like view of like church where start you're to turn? At with church change. Like um, when did your shift start happening? Or has it happened? Like where are you at right now? Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Um I think like growing up it was uh um forced a bit of like you had to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to be part of youth group. I had to be part of church. Yeah. Wasn't an option. Mm-mm. Yep. And I think when I left to go to school, mm-hmm. granted it was a Christian university. Yes. But um <laughs> side eye. Side eye. Um side but eye. what I appreciated from it was I got to kind of choose the level of mm-hmm. Christian E. Yeah. As I wanted I I could make it as Christian-y as I wanted it to be. Totally. So, if you wanted to go to chapel every day, you could. Yeah, and, like, I got a credit for going, like, half a credit. Are you for real? Yeah. Yeah. Really, it's a Christian school. That's so awesome. You could, like, sign up to take it as a course, and then you had to, like, write a paper on your favorite sermon or something. I only did that for, like, the first year. Yeah, if and only like, Chat GPT was around back then. Right, Whew. Ugh, man, A's papers, all around. My papers would have been <laughs> next point. level. Um, and like I, I was part of a life group yeah. for like the first couple of months. That's uh, how I met my best friend. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, we were next door neighbors, but we also because we lived on the same floor, went to the same life group, and then we were like, should we like, should we go make this watch a, thing? a movie <laughs> or something else? Yeah. Um. So, uh, should we do anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Hush has a smushy face. Hush has the smushiest face. Um, and my roommate that I came from Colorado with right. to school was very in the church at the time, too. And so she was really like the one who's like, let's get up and let's go try and find a church. I'm like, okay, it's what my parents would want me to do. I had a best friend just like that. Nope, Never met her. No, 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 no. I was going to, is this when you came to visit Second Church? My very first church that I went to when I moved to Arizona was Second Church. Did you not know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Because we knew some people there. Because the world is small. This town is so Isn't small. Isn't that wild, though? Yeah. That is crazy. So if you guys were there in August 2012. Uh, yeah, I uh, would have. Absolutely. Yeah, we probably, probably were there we at the same time. We probably ran into each other. I was in high school still, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, is that crazy? And then, like, her and Jansen wouldn't meet for another three years. And he wasn't going then. No. He and I were both starting to, like, meh. He was and done. I was not. I was still trying. At that time, with Tinder, you could see, like, I think you could connect your Facebook in a yes. sense. So you could see, like, mutual friends yeah, on friends Facebook. Yeah, friends of friends. And H- Jansen and I had a mutual friend from Second Church. Oh, And I gosh. was like, You'll have to tell us later. I had no idea. Yeah. How weird. So, um, tried to go, try to f- multiple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of landed on one that, like, I would go to. But also, like, I was tired <laughs> on Sundays, and I just wanted to sleep in. <laughs> college student trying yes. to like we're americans we only get two days to breathe and actually yes. be humans okay if you're lucky if you're lucky and not working retail <laughs> yeah and two or three jobs yeah yeah that's so crazy so i yeah. think i think freshman year i really tried to like sure find a church and and be in it but i was never because i hated youth group i never wanted to be Ugh. part of like a small group no. it's Awful. and this has been my problem with <laughs> church in general is I feel like it's very fake and I feel like everyone knows the phrases that you need to say and like mm-hmm. the Christianese of it all and I can't stand it. Yes. Yeah. And it just 
it's not authentic. It isn't. So, like, I don't want to be part of it. Sorry. Nope. Not sorry. But, Ugh. yeah. So, I think, like, college. That was the long-winded way of me saying. I think around college is when I... like that you did the long-winded way. Mm-hmm. When I kind of decided, you know what? I don't have to. Yeah. And I'm not going to because I'm an adult and I can make this decision for myself. 100%. I'm kind of surprised that I stayed as long as I did. I went like in and out. Mm -hmm. For college, I kind of tried, but then we had like no college people my age. All of my graduating class left. They all went out of state and I stayed in. Yeah. So I was like kind of involved in helping kids stuff, but. Well, you had that college ministry for like a minute. A minute. I helped. I Yeah. I ran it. I helped run it. Yeah. That's the only yeah. reason it stuck around. And the second I stopped it, you guys mostly just watched a lot of Lost. Yeah, I blacked that out. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I remember that very vividly. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, I, I'm surprised I stayed in as long as I did. Yeah, I think too. Part of it was like anytime I'd go home. Yeah, everyone's like, mm-hmm. so like, that's the only question, really. Kind of like, what church are you going to? Yeah, mm-hmm. it kind of still is. Like, are you involved in a church? Yeah. No. no. How sad I, that that's like that that's their like view of the of of your value to the world is going like, to a church. So did you find a church? church? Yeah. Are you involved? Like, Are no. you spreading the word? And Jensen and I tried when we first got married to like, James go, and I did too. Go yeah. to a couple and there was one we went to, it was Easter Sunday, which was like <laughs> the worst <laughs> too. Yeah. Because it's quite the production and oh, I'm just yeah. like this sucks. Yeah. This is not what I... Doesn't it feel so want. yucky now? Mm-hmm. We s- tried when... Right before I moved in with him in 2020, <laughs> uh, we tried to go around where we lived in Linwood to just try on a couple of churches. And that was the first time, one, with a partner going to church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never gone to church with someone I was dating. Yeah. So that was weird in and of itself. And then, two, we were potentially moving in together. So all these people would be like, so when are you getting married? And like pushing this question mm-hmm. of like, oh, you're going to live together first? Blink, blink. I'm like, blink, blink. this is Seattle. <laughs> this is yeah. 2019 in yeah. Seattle. What? Who are you people? Yeah. It felt so gross and so fake and such a production. Yeah. And I kept hoping to, because I do love community. It's like why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. But... I need my community to know my true self. And I just don't feel like a church is capable of doing that because it's a bunch of humans with their own agenda. Yeah. It's yucky. When did you start to shift away? Maybe this is a good time to (laughs) kind of fill in the holes a little bit. (laughs) Mentally or physically? (laughs) Because those are two different answers. (laughs) Um, So born and raised in the church, literally from day one yeah. in utero <laughs> right there um yeah all, like all of my childhood memories are all connected to church to being in youth groups to being in bible studies women's retreats working women's retreats doing child care starting to babysit at 12 mm-hmm. um for church families um for free for, well uh, sometimes i got paid. paid in food yeah <laughs> other issue sorry i got um, you off i got paid in mlm products <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say that. and sometimes money um <laughs> anyways um then got into junior high and high school and started asking more questions um started being really frustrated with the non-answer answers as being mm. given and being fed um Yes, because for background, mm-hmm. our father is ex- was an extremely conservative, uh, legalistic Christian where mm-hmm. women were the, I don't know, side gig. Be seen, not heard. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he had two daughters who were very much loud. Yeah. And we had lots of questions. We had a lot of pushback. And, and then a lot of opinions. When her and my world started expanding with different mm-hmm. kinds of people, mm-hmm. it was like we were being fed for the first time and getting information, yeah. which is why we started asking. She started asking questions from a very young age, and then I started yeah. watching her being like, oh, wait a That's second. That's a possibility. I can do <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, because I was poking at things at 10, 11, mm-hmm. like till 13, like starting to be like, can you give someone yeah, yeah, yeah. an example? Like, poking, like I one because I was raised to love everyone. Mm-hmm. I was poking questions at, but why can't I love this type of person mm-hmm. the way I want to love them? Mm-hmm. Granted, 
also very closeted but <laughs> being like wanting to be like okay so in high school i got in a lot of trouble because i Stop touching your mic. i'm sorry it's i yeah i know um you're because I did you. a spoken word of Same Love by Macklemore oh. um, as a theater project. And I got in a lot of trouble for doing that. Really? Um, and and got very heavily questioned for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember being so angry and so frustrated because I'm like, you're telling me that I have to love everyone. But then when I do that, I'm wrong. Yeah. Because then I'm being told, well, loving's not condoning. Hmm. Yeah. Love the sin or not the sin. All oh, that. Oh, God. Bullshit. Um, bleep that. Bleep that. Sorry. <laughs> Balarkey. Balarkey. <laughs> um, Can you pass me a tissue? I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. No, you're okay. My lipstick is. My lipstick is not yummy. It's, it's getting like emulsified. Mm. Mm. Gross. I hate that. Um. Yeah. So like questioning things, poking, poking, prodding, yeah. pulling, trying to pull answers out of my parental figure, out of leadership, out like anything, and also like trigger warning, dealing with suicidal ideation from mm. a very young age. Yeah. Mm. Um. I remember as far back as nine and 10 years old because I was heavily bullied mm -hmm. in elementary school and then throughout high school having ideations and having these thoughts of like, well, the world would just be better off if I wasn't here. Yeah. And wanting to ask questions about that and being told to, to stop it. Yeah. And that, and that all you had to do was to stop it, yes. to stop yeah. thinking about yeah. it. And that that was the devil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your sin. And my sin. And that, that any, any doubt was sin mm -hmm. and that any, um, not, you know, not seeing life as sacred, yeah. um, was, was sinful and, and it was that, all your fault. And, <laughs> and I was letting the devil into my life Yeah, and that, um, well, you're just believing the devil's lies. And it was like, no, I'm mentally ill and nobody's doing anything about yeah. it and i need to be medicated <laughs> yeah <laughs> like no like i need an intervention and i'm being told to pray about it yeah like, and you're trying to ask for help and yeah. no one's yeah they you know what they were doing they were telling us that we were abnormal yeah that was their solution mm -hmm. if you can't pray your way out of this and be more normal and look more normal because at second church we did not look the no. part yeah we were we're not large athletes large girls <laughs> we were not athletes we were depressed and yeah. desperately needing therapy and mm -hmm. i was desperately needing an intervention from my abuser mm -hmm. and unhealthy mm -hmm. yeah. and then expected to deal with that like the growing mm -hmm. up fastness i feel like we mm -hmm. all yeah. get that very well yeah. yeah but that's also just an expectation of girls in yeah. that in world church. yeah of like you are told like girls just mature faster i'm like no we're just told to girls just mature <laughs> faster and they are they are the mothers yeah you know your mm -hmm. mother's in prep that's your only gift to society is that you bring in the next generation yeah. and you build up the home and that you love mm -hmm. love your children and the next generation with jesus to create more little jesus's oh yeah it. Sorry, I'm just picturing little Jesus. Little Jesus. <laughs> just Jesus. Future Bailey, can do you, you know just that? put little Jesus you stickers? Know that? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that song from, from church? Mm -hmm. um, it, if I had, like, if I had tiny Jesus in a box. <gasps> yeah. Nope, missed that one. Nope. And then you put the little devil in a box and you smash it. <laughs> what? Yeah. I do not remember yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Well, you are a different generation. <laughs> and I feel like kind of campy. Yes. Like it was oh, a camp song. oh, it is yeah. a camp song. Camp song. Okay, camp song. Uh, that rings a bell. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, sorry. Um, so tangents. second church, second church. <sighs> I'm questioning things. I'm pushing back. I'm trying to understand myself. Yeah, the world, our place in this world. Yeah. but I'm also like investing deeper, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I, I need. An, we've talked about it before. Like I needed an identity. Yep. that wasn't my real one. Right. So, okay. And an identity that would get you out of this. Yes. Yeah. And get me out of Arizona, get me out of the body that I was in. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will pursue and pursue and pursue 
this life with Jesus and this life of ministry, mm-hmm. um, becoming, you know, I moved away, um, and then came back from Washington state, became a youth leader mm-hmm. at 21, um, and even more invested my life into this church body that I thought was going to be my forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and just pushed myself deeper into the mold and said, okay, like square peg, round hole, but I'll force keep, it in. Keep forcing it. Like yeah. keep mushing myself like I'm Play Doh to just, mm. but I'm not. <laughs> and then I got to Bosnia. Yeah. How old were you? I, I turned 25 while I was there. Yeah. Um, and I got, I moved there in, in January of 2021. And, um, for the first time I was alone, living alone, uh, having my own apartment, all of that, and really being alone with my thoughts mm. and alone with my God. Right. Yeah. In a way that I had never been really before. Cause even when I had done some mission stuff in 2016, when I was, um, 18 or 19 and 20, that was with a team. I was always with people. I was never really alone. Yeah. And so this was the first time that I was really just on my own for it. Mm-hmm. And I began to really start to process stuff that I hadn't really let myself process, yeah. including the stuff with our dad and the stuff with the church. And even when I left, I kind of knew it was the end of my era mm-hmm. with second church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And church, church, would you yeah. say? Yeah, I mean, I yes and no. Like, I, I have, I've kind of, Sorry. at that point, I had already done a lot of the deconstruction work. Yeah, I think you did internally. too. Because you were talking to me about it by mm-hmm. that point, which is why I was surprised that you wanted to do Bosnia and you f- mm-hmm. went through this, especially because the pandemic started. I was like, mm-hmm. she's not going to do this now. Yeah. And yeah. you still did. But I think it's because <laughs> you just wanted an adventure and I'm glad that you yeah. did. And not just an adventure. I wanted, I wanted the opportunity to see who I could be yeah. without Everyone. all of the other layers, without mm-hmm. the, the second church layer, without, you yeah. know, without any expectation who could Halsey just be? Yeah. And it turned out she gay as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever told you how sad I am about that you never received the card that I sent you for your birthday? N- no. I knew there were stickers in it, but that's there were there were fabulous I put stickers, stickers in my card too. too. Oh, yeah, that makes me. So I sad. never got my birthday cards because Bosnia mail is really hard. It's to get. really bad. But <laughs> you came out to me after I sent the card. Yeah. The card was me telling you you can do that like you yeah. can say it that yeah. I already knew and I wanted her to just feel loved and yeah. saying it yeah. before she ever told me because mm-hmm. I knew before you left that you would come out by the time that you got back because we mm-hmm. had already kind of talked a little bit about it yeah you hinted hard you too. hinted yeah well, hard. yeah well on my last visit <laughs> we were taking a walk and um she goes I go yeah when I get back like the next car I really want is a super is another Subaru and she goes are you sure you don't like girls and I at that point I finally was just like jury's out and I kept walking <laughs> oh no <laughs> power walk power walk yeah. walking away but from I was, this conversation at that point in her life we had finally started to get to know each other yeah mm-hmm. because she had come up to Washington I had spent that time with her and she was also part of like my first ever breakup mm-hmm. and yes. was the only person who knew me in Washington that well to watch mm-hmm. that fall apart mm-hmm. and it felt like it was kismet it was yeah. she was meant to be there that summer yeah. so yeah. random but i was so mad at her that she wasn't coming out to me before she left i was like do it in person do it in person <laughs> i could little cancer ass you <laughs> went all the way to a different country listen i like a bit of a show <laughs> <laughs> i like a bit of a uh, Thea- theater <laughs> theatrical yeah. theater the theater and what's more theatrical than coming out over facetime <laughs> True. and i go I know. I know. <laughs> I love you. Your I know. your closet was glass. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a little glitter in it. It did. Rainbow yeah. glass. Iridescent. Iridescent. Ooh. Um so you came out came out when you were in Bosnia to your family and just you my family said and a few friends. 
please keep this on the DL yes. until I get home. Yeah. Because but also, <laughs> so other backstory to this. What? I had been out at jobs. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You told us that later. For like two years. Yes. <laughs> so you had already pr- put this on for size. Yes. You're t- Granted, tone. at that t- point, I still was trying real hard to be bisexual. <laughs> I feel that. Because I was like, I could still marry a man. I could still bring a man to the church. It's fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Uh, no. 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 Just full gay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. It came out li- literally June 1st of 2021. Yeah. Called mom. Said hi. Gay. She said, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. And? She had already ordered a pride pin. She did. Yes. She had already, you know. She, she bought ready. a shirt that day. Yeah. She was She was, she was ready. But yeah. I also, like, when it comes to the coming out story stuff, like, I'm so deeply grateful that, like, our mom was at that point already by the time I came out. Because I can't even think about Mm-mm. if I had come out in high school. Oh, my God. No. Or, or earlier, you or know. earlier. Not that our mom was, like, this no. insane bigot, but she, w- she wouldn't have been ready no. for that. And I think people in her life yep. had mm-hmm. prepared her, yes. in a sense, because she had the perspective of... yes. Other being people, with other yes. people who were going through similar right yes, Be- because she had gone into the workforce yeah. so a little mm-hmm. filling of the holes mm. um halsey's life changed drastically parent wise because she had when we talk about that you had different parents than i did mm-hmm. it's significant about how much you i had access to our parents and you did not in yeah. your adolescence mm-hmm. and she started working when i was 16 so the, 17? the year i went into third grade yeah we moved to second church yes mom started working for the first time ever well, for, well as a mom full time yeah and not just like church. cleaning houses or church, church working. stuff because for her other background our mom was a vacation bible school leader children's pastor wedding coordinator and funeral director for first church mm-hmm. and women's ministries yeah. first church all this mm-hmm. second church she was women's ministries but that took years that took years because she was yeah. so hurt she needed first church a lot yeah. of time she but did anyways. she took anyway sorry yeah no you're okay wanted the background and the context yeah so yeah that that was 2004 so 2004 everything changed yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. uh yeah Jeez. What's no no oh. um bosnia, I, came, bosnia home. came home yeah, came did. home. So at while in Bosnia, mom started sending me. She had found this church here in Arizona mm-hmm. yeah. that was fully affirming. Um, and Say what that is for people who might not know. So an affirming church is a is a church that believes that all sexual orientation is valid, mm-hmm. and especially in the eyes of God, um, that they are affirming of those relationships that you can get married, you can serve in leadership positions. Um, a lot of, there are quite a few churches now, especially in the nom- denominational sector of Christianity that are, um, accepting, but not affirming. Mm-hmm. So you can be there, which is what I experienced in second church. Mm-hmm. You can be there, but you're, we're not going to honor any relationship you have. Yeah. yeah. You cannot get married. Nope. And you can't be you in can't leadership. Work. You can't be in leadership. You cannot work in the body. In, with kids. No, yeah. but you can be here. Just. So yeah ostracized that yeah. was my experience when i came home yeah. um i finished the process of like coming out to who i needed to come out to personally um, personally before i posted anything or yeah. came out to the church and then i met with one of the elders of the church and that was fine <laughs> and then met with him and the pastor of that church and was told we love you. We want you here. But that's Ev- a big old but. Well, yeah. It, what is it called? Everything before the but is nullified. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or but, whatever. Yeah. So we love yeah. you, but this is not God's design. <laughs> it is not appropriate for you to be in leadership. And these are just a bunch of straight white men telling her this, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, that it is not appropriate for you to continue leading youth um that you can yeah what yeah. does that even mean well because i was gonna so you're you know, gonna pervert them turn them all <laughs> just turn them all gay <laughs> disgusting which, that's how which, it works how background it works. on this part of our second church yeah they had trans kids who were coming out to their parents mm-hmm. who yeah. needed to get gender affirming care gender affirming <laughs> care yeah. and these poor parents are trying to get leadership to tell them what 
give me some tools. And in, and they just make that whole conversation perverse. They had, uh, there were plenty of kids in my graduating class who were gay and openly gay, but it was not something that we are, it's like they always stayed on the fence about, about yeah. everything yeah. Yeah. instead of answering the question the way God intended you to answer it, which is love thyself and all people, mm-hmm. no matter what. Yeah. Gross. I'm so, so sorry, Halsey. Uh, yeah, so I stepped down. <laughs> said, and mom promptly left yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, and that was one of the, the pieces that held me back for a very long time. Was mom. Not because of anything she said no. or anything no, 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 she no. did, but out of my wanting, again, because of childhood trauma, yeah. to protect her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and not wanting to blow up her life. Because timeline-wise, yeah. her life had already been blown up. And yeah. the yeah. only <laughs> thing that her and Halsey had was church family yeah. and the things that they were involved in. Yeah. So I didn't want to blow up her life again. <laughs> uh, so I... But she by no means was going to stay in a body that didn't want me there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we promptly dipped. <laughs> and I have not been back since. Yeah. Now you're in like this, I call it the purgatory zone. Yeah. <laughs> I I still, I wouldn't say agnostic. I, I hmm. still like, I don't even know where I d- identify it as really. What I've explained before is like, I've never felt closer to my creator hmm. until the last two years. Wow. That, like, the last two years of being true to myself, of being mm. honest with everyone, mm. is what brought me closer to who I believe created That's me. That's so freaking cool, Halsey. Yeah. I'm um, really glad for that. <laughs> Despite the things that people in leadership were telling you, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because in their minds, you are less of a Christian because of these quote-unquote choices you've made, even yeah. though you have not made them. This is who you are. Yeah. I think it's really cool and such a F you to them <laughs> of, like, joke's on you. I can become more closer to my God despite yeah. your behaviors yeah. and your unacceptance yeah. of me. So I, it's, it's, I mean, people probably wonder why I go to so many gosh dang concerts um is it the worship feeling (laughs) part of it is yeah that like i deeply miss group worship Mm. and that camaraderie and that feeling of being connected to Mm -hmm. an entire room of people Mm -hmm. and so that's why i go to so many shows is because it is still that i get to still get that same feeling yeah Yeah. um i didn't ever think about it like that yeah Especially a hosier show, man. So. That's, that's yeah, worship. you are going to church. Yeah. <laughs> church, take me to church. Take me to church, mm, that man. Anyway, sorry, yeah, James. No. <clears throat> um, <laughs> he just does dirty so well, you know. Yeah. He really does. He's yeah. like sexy grimy. How uh, would you guys feel with that pause? Yeah, on uh, pausing on the re- we're we're gonna do another episode. Oh yeah, there's gonna be part for sure of I more will. religious conversations where we're at spiritually, all that kind of stuff as yeah. we go. This is not the, gonna be the last episode because I would like to talk about books for just a sec about what we want to read moving forward. Should we do? Oh no, sorry, not books. I'm looking at the wrong page. <laughs> Goal getter updates, real fast, because I know Kelly's really proud of her goal getter updates. I'm pretty I want to hear from more from Kelly because I feel like I've been talking a long time. So, how do you feel about the topic today, and how much do you feel like you want to share more about where you're at? You're kind of are I, you? I kind of do want to actually hear one. You answer one question if you're okay with yeah. it. What do you? Where do you feel like your spiritual journey is going right now, or do you feel like it's just on uh, hiatus? Hiatus. Pause. What are you, are you just like, I'm good for right now? <laughs> I'm here. Um, <laughs> Such a freaking Libra. I'm here. Yeah, I don't really know. Yeah. And I think similar to, k- kind of to what you're saying mm-hmm. where you're like, I don't know what I would call, call it. Myself. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know if I would necessarily say I'm a Christian. Yeah. I said that I've for never the first said that time. Out loud, I so. know. I said it for the first <laughs> time out loud to mom mm-hmm. when we did our royal palms date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and I had never said it out loud. It was the strangest feeling, but as soon as I said it, I was like, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think that I'm wrong. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, I think I'm just kind of vibing a little bit. Same. <laughs> and I think that I think I believe in something of some sort of higher power, but I don't know what it is mm-hmm. yep. because I think that there's more to it than mm-hmm. yep. there has to be. There's there no way that has to be this book is no completely is correct. No, yeah. this piece of, I just think it's not patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. Capitalism nineties washed Bible. Yeah. I don't so, know. That can't so be the only thing. Started on, Never mind. <laughs> we'll get into it later episode. another time but so yeah i, I feel think, that i think i'm just kind of here and i just mm-hmm. yeah i don't feel the need to seek anything out yeah no. i for i wonder if this will resonate with you um i feel like i was asked to give so much of myself to church for so much of my life yeah that it's me time baby mm. i'm yeah. doing me I'm figuring out what brings me joy and I'm being selfish and I don't care. Yep. I, I don't because I was asked to do the opposite my whole adulthood and childhood and to give everything Mm -hmm. to the Mm -hmm. church and the body and Christ and none of it did anything for me. Yeah. And I knew from a really young age that it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just waiting. And I, I grew up having to, I guess not. I had the option to work at camp or get a real job. Yeah. And I decided to work at camp. But it was like if I I I felt very much like I had to in a sense because people were watching. Yeah. Mm. And we're in that position. Yeah. This is what people would expect of me. Mm. And so that's what I had to do. Yeah. But why? I'm so surprised that you left for school. Were you uh, surprised with yourself that you did it? Like that you chose that choice? <laughs> um, No, I mean, I think I wanted to go somewhere for school. I knew. Pineapple Guys, watermelon. you did it. Um, <gasps> I... <laughs> Do you want a tissue? I knew that if I stayed. <laughs> I couldn't stuff with my family and my sister yeah i couldn't be there for that yeah sorry you do not have to apologize for tears honey it was a really dark time that i didn't want to be part of yeah but i thought i was gonna go to school and i had very full intentions that i was gonna go back yeah but you just needed time away yeah this is only like (laughs) tops third time i've ever seen you cry and it's kind of like it always feels like a gift (laughs) that's how i feel when i make (laughs) oh when james cries i'm like yes (laughs) something releases inside me and i'm like i did it it." (laughs) he's human (laughs) um Um, i think i've only seen you cry when you're in pain which makes me so sad so i'm not in pain but (laughs) i think i knew I un- I subconsciously knew I couldn't be there for yeah, yeah. that that yeah. season. I get that. So, but it made 100% me hundred percent honor up. that, and it, I think it was honestly yeah. the best yeah decision I ended up making for myself. And you Absolutely. Know yeah, I met <laughs> I met my husband. <laughs> I met you your met brother. Your I met you guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm proud of past Kelly mm-hmm. for knowing that. You needed that because I, and I'm not jealous of you. I am jealous of you that you needed that and learned that and called it for yourself at that age. I wish I could have done that for myself, Mm -hmm. but I was so concerned with how my father was being perceived because he was failing a lot Mm -hmm. career wise and church wise by the time I was going into college and our whole family was falling apart financially. And I just couldn't imagine leaving at that point I don't think I would have been able to grow up I honestly think if I would have left for college and gone to Washington and actually done it I think I would have gone down the other path of Mm -hmm. partying 
zoning out, cutting yeah. myself out of the world and just like plummeting to the depths. You. Yeah. I think you guys would have definitely lost me if I would have left for college. Yeah. yeah. So while I feel like I was in this horrible jail cell <laughs> for college in my early twenties, mm -hmm. I do think it was that moment, that thought process of like, I'll be back. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'll do this hard stuff. I'll leave and then I'll come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to Arizona. I'm not moving back to Arizona. <laughs> Don't even get me started. But I would. <laughs> <laughs> do we even want to do goal getters? <laughs> <laughs> we do you need to go to go. our pedicures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Goal getters are going well for you and me mm -hmm. because we're figuring out our routines. We talked about that yeah. in the appetizer episode. I got a laptop. I'm working on CapCut. Yeah. See some cool stuff. And that was part of your goal getter anyway. To goal. like. Yeah. To get a laptop. Techify. Get a laptop. You did yeah. it. Check. Mm -hmm. Um. I am excited to see you expand. I think you're, she's already working on Get Ready With Me content. It's so good, you guys. Yeah. It's going to be some You dope. need she to follow <laughs> us on TikTok. So with that, let's do some wrap-ups. Mm -hmm. um, Patreon launch. We talked about it in the last episode. You should definitely be seeing us talking about it on social in between episodes. Yeah. Um, we're only charging $5 a month for exclusive content and different shows. We do a tarot time episode. We do buds and buns where most of the time I partake in certain herbs. And then we scroll TikTok. We hang out. We watch stuff. Oh, and that's no the fun you. part about Patreon is like, James will be on it. There mm -hmm. will be the pup, the pod pups will be on it. We're gonna do exclusive content behind the scenes. If Halsey can ever get a girlfriend, she'll be on maybe it. Maybe she'll be on it, <laughs> or they. Um, yeah, and Kelly, our creator, creative director extraordinaire, oh. is creating fun wallpapers, quote graphics from the show, fun relevant things that we see that we're into, like Tucci's. Or two cheese. Oh, you need short stickers. Oh, Halsey got us stickers. I got us stickers. Do, do, do. And then Kelly and I are going to brainstorm tomorrow um, uh, a salon show. Yeah. Where I do her nails. And maybe we, I don't know. Who knows what we're going to do? Are you going to do my nails? Yeah, I, I can do your nails, nails too. Nails, my nails are fresh, though. I used to do my, my friend's nails when I lived in Seattle. <laughs> It was how, like, we bonded and did, like, Friday nights. And in the pandemic, it was the only way that we could do self-care was, like, <laughs> on each other. Yeah. Um, like helps. And I miss that. I miss yeah. doing nails. I feel like I'm pretty good at them for other people. And mm -hmm. I have so much stuff that I don't use anymore because it's my one luxury yeah. to go get mm -hmm. my nails done. Hi, chair. Um, I did All a right. nail vlog. Okay, I'm sorry. My Wrap ADHD. <laughs> okay. Bleep that. Uh, follow. Subscribe. Rate. Review. Comment comment you guys i don't care what you comment comment a green heart i don't care just do it if you it. got this far comment a peach emoji oh yeah with a cross a cup oh. <laughs> kinky i mean eggplant kinkier mm. <laughs> mm. um we love you guys yeah. i love you guys thank you for you. being so open we all cry vulnerable <laughs> and for giving me space to tell a really hard story yeah. <sighs> i need to go get high thanks for Ooh. watching and listening to this episode episode eight Nine. Nine. Nine was fine of Blood and Contracts. I'm Bailey Gabbert, and I'm always co-hosted by my sister by contract. Kelly. And my sister by blood. Halsey. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.